Jack is a retired biologist who worked with uh, Ministry of Environment, uh, sorry, Ministry of Natural Resources for over 30 years and has been a fly angler even longer than that. So he uh, brings a great deal of knowledge and experience to the club. Um, we've had Jack discussing various conservation topics in the past. Okay. Today, he'll be doing a fly tying session where he'll be showing us some of his weaving techniques for tying flies. Okay. So without further delay, I'll hand over to Jack to go through his presentation. Thanks, Jack. Well, thank you very much. And thanks everybody for inviting me to uh, the, the chat and tie tonight. Yeah, I thought that uh, when um, Brian uh, sent me a note saying, would you like to tie flies? I thought, how could I tie? I mean, there's so many good fly tires in the club. Um, what, what would be kind of just interesting to uh, think about? And I thought back about uh, two-tone flies. Um, there's a variety of ways of making two-tone flies, laying up uh, one color over top of the, uh, the, the body and, and uh, over top of another color and then ribbing it. But then I thought, I remembered um, years ago, um, reading uh, an article by uh, George Grant um, 10 years ago about um, uh, Bailey's um, woven uh, stone fly that he used out West. And then I remembered uh, tying uh, flies as well in relation to that. So I thought, well, it might be kind of fun to just chat, chat about uh, weaving flies because it's just another technique that you can use if you want to. It's kind of a niggly, piggly technique. It can be a real pain in the bum. Uh, my wife doesn't like to stay in the same room, same house when I'm tying, when I'm weaving flies because I'm cursing all the time. But um, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's another technique to use uh, to get that two-tone look. And I'll, I'll show you an example of uh, one of the flies that really lends itself well to two-tone. So it looks sort of like that on that side and right on the other side. And that's just using a weaving different materials. And this is, imitates a, a caddis fly that, uh, it's a free living caddis fly that lives in our streams. Like you'll find it on the Saugeen and the Credit and a lot of other streams. It's a predatory caddis fly. It's called Ryacophila fuscula. It's, some people call it a green worm. You'll, 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 you uh, do a little kick sample, you'll get a bug in it. You know, it's a, yeah, it sort of looks like a caddis fly larvae and at the back is sort of a dull green, uh, dark green color. And you flip it upside down and it's a bright you know, limey olive underneath. And uh, the fish quite often, uh, that, that's a cue to the fish when that thing is tumbling down, down the stream to see that, that two-tone uh, flash of color. So weaving does a very good job of, um, of uh, Make, uh, uh, demonstrating that. Another one, of course, are stone flies with dark body on one side and <clears throat> bright on the other side. So you can you can do that for um, for stone flies as well. Uh, and helgramites and a variety of other ones. So I thought for uh, for today's um, presentation and, and chat, I'd uh, just talk a little bit about weaving. I, I, I thought to myself, because I used to have a book on weaving flies, I'll damn if I can find it. But I thought, well, I'll go to the universal source of all things good and bad in the world. So I went to, onto the internet and uh, all I did was a quick little simple search, weaving trout flies or woven trout flies and all sorts of resources come up. Now showing the, one of the techniques that I'll show you this evening and other types of techniques as well. Uh, and also there are some books out there on weaving flies if you're, you're so inclined to, uh, or so a little bit more masochistic than I am even, to uh, try try them out. But weaving is, is a good use, uh, is, a, is a useful um, approach. You can use a variety of materials. Uh, the, the challenge of course is you, <laughs> no, no matter what materials you use, it's a bit of uh, being very dexterous and getting your fingers to do certain things. And I'll, I'll show you, uh, uh, the, the technique for the weaving I'll do, and I'll use it on an extra large hook and some heavy duty material, and then I'll actually tie a real fly. But uh, the materials vary. Um, I've used, um, see if I can find this up here. I've used uh, this stuff here, which is um, just basically um, the vinyl, vinyl ribbing. You can use vinyl ribbing, different colors to get that two-tone look. It's very slippery. So it can be a real pain in the bum to tie with. Um, another one that I use and I have been using is floss. I dropped in, I saw Ray and uh, Ray at the first cast and then I went over to see um, Scott and Tanya over at the, uh, and Fergus. I said, 
you yeah, guys ever hear of um, of a braided floss? No, no. I said there must be braided floss somewhere because it would be a lot easier to, to weave a fly with braided material rather than just straight floss. But I've been doing that. And the other material that I've used is um, micro chenille or ultra ultra chenille, micro ultra chenille. So you can use that. Um, I think Dan Bailey's uh, flies that he designed used horse hair because it's again long strands and it's kind of glossy. So uh, you can use a whole variety of materials. Uh, you're only limited to your imagination and your level of frustration. So it's it, it's kind of fun. So I'll I'll show you the the basic we uh, we what I'm going to do is I've already tied some material onto a hook, a big hook. I'm not going to, this is not a, a fly per se. This is just a demonstration. And I'm going to flip it over to the uh, the near view in a moment. So you have two strands. You usually tie the, the, uh, the material on it, tie one, uh, the, the bright color on the looking, uh, looking at the, 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 uh, the hook side closest to me. And I'll tie the darker material on, on the far side usually. And the weaving is, again, ambidextrous is, this goes over top. This goes on, the light part thing goes underneath. This one goes over top. The light part goes underneath. It's hard. I'm sorry that my hands are getting in the way. I'm trying to avoid getting my hands in the way. So you weave up and down. So the, the, the bright material is always the bottom part. The dark material is always goes over top. Then you fold it back over. Then underneath again is yes, um, I thought I'd uh, tie uh, one of these stone flies. So I took the the um, liberty before I before um, the tying tonight and just got something prepped. So I've got um, the, the materials on with uh, with the tail as well. I'll attach this and then we'll show the weaving and the, the remain and, the fi and finishing off the fly. It's so much easier to weave when you don't have a, a bobbin with thread in front of you. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can't tie a fly like that. So, okay, let's see here. So I've got two materials here, and I'm using um, I'm using uh, ultra chenille, which, in retrospect, probably is not the best material to use because, as you know, with chenille, if you keep on rubbing it, it tends to uh, the fine fibers tend to wear off. So uh, I would suggest that in in the long run, a little pieces of wool. If you can find wool that's nicely tightly wound so that it doesn't pull apart when you're pulling it, would be good. Anyway, I'll just attach the uh, the, the um, thread the the, the uh, thread right now. I'm going to keep it forward just to keep it as much out of my way as possible. Okay. So. I'm going to weave the body. I'll turn it this way. So hopefully you can see some of the activity. So I've got the fibers on both sides. So I'm taking the dark, dark part over top. Be careful here. If anybody has questions, I'm happy to, I can, I can, I can talk and tie and weave at the same time. So I'm just starting the process. I almost overlap the dark with the previous winds just to make it tight as possible. And are you, notice, Jack, when ahead. you're tying the material on at the beginning, are you yep. trying to uh, get like a wide flat body to help the profile more? You or do can. You not, worry about, not worry about it too much. No, I, 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 I have done that. As a matter of fact, what I'll quite often do is I'll, well, I used to use lead, uh, you know, lead wire. Sure one on either side to flatten. Of course, now I don't do that. Now I use just regular wire, but I will use regular wire wire on the, each side of the hook shank to widen the profile. Right. I, did, I didn't do it tonight only because I just want to keep it simpler. Sure. No, um, but, yeah. but I mean, you, get, you do get a very nice wide flat profile that's hard to achieve with, you know, a regular dubbing. That's correct. You do get a very much a much nicer view yeah. using this technique. Yeah. Now, whether that matters to the fish as it's tumbling down the river is another question. But well, that's exactly the point. 
<laughs> is does a really does the fish really give a darn? And be honest with you, I mean, I, I suspect the answer is no. Yeah. But you but you never know. So here I'm holding it tight, and I'm going to now you can't see okay, there. I'm I'm catching the material. So I have uh, see if I can turn it over there more like that. Okay, so I've caught the material. So there's my woven body at the back. So brighten this on the underneath. And this so I'm just going to keep this simple. There's all sorts of ways to make coverts and all that sort of stuff. I'm just going to keep it as simple as possible. I'm for the covert or the, the back, I'm just gonna use uh, raffia. I've also used uh, turkey quill and all sorts of other materials. So, but uh, tonight, just to make it easier, I'm just gonna keep it, keep it simple. Keep it as simple as possible. I'm trying to listen to Bill Phillips in my head here. So I'm just putting, just going to finish off this fly off here. So I'm getting it. I'm just trying to taper this uh, this this material out a bit. And I I use wax thread, but I also just put it on. I slide the point up, catch it once, and then I just spin it in one direction. That makes it not, not very easy to to dub on. Okay. Actually, I just need a bit more there. Okay, just put a little bit more on. Okay, and I'm going to put a. Sometimes I'll I'll spin um, uh, fur the spinners, um, and uh, and to create the legs. But other times I just use um, feathers. So this one I'll just use feathers. Oopsie. Okay. Okay. Slide it back. Goes back here. Okay. And I'll just use a little tool here to roughen that up a bit. Okay. And if I can figure out where the heck I just put my feather. Oh, there it is. Okay. So I'm using uh, just a nice, simple little feather like that. Dive, dive this on here. This one off the end. And just just use uh, one of these thing with jigs here, which I think was originally from a electronic shop. Get these at electronic shops. Don't have to pay three times the price for them at uh, through a fly shop. I didn't say that, did I? Okay. We all know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's amazing. I think that um, Brian. And a couple of us were having conversations about uh, fly time materials, and I said, you know, the vast majority of fly time materials that we that we buy from fly shops tend to probably start their life in a Michaels. Yeah, exactly. So you don't have to buy from a fly shop, although I do support my local fly shops. But what you can do is uh, occasional trips into a Michaels can be very beneficial for fly for picking up material. Okay, I'm just gonna put the head on this one. This is not the prettiest one in the world, but it'll it'll do. There we go. Okay. Jack, I had a question about the leading step. You mentioned it was really tough and challenging and uh, your wife doesn't like to be around when you're doing that. What is the big challenge? You seem to get through it pretty easily. Is it keeping the equal tension? Uh, yeah. Like, if we're just starting and we're not as good at it, where are we going to pull our hair out on this? And how do we, how do we get around those bumps? Uh, how do we get around the challenging at the tension? Practice. Practice. <laughs> um, <clears throat> No, well, uh, the challenge I find is trying to find the materials that I'm most comfortable using. Uh, this right now, I'm as I said, I'm, uh, for this one, I'm I'm just simply using uh, using uh, micro chenille, ultra chenille. Again, you can see it's just there's a view of it there. I'm just using ultra chenille, but uh, I have I often will use floss. 
but trouble with floss is you want to um, you want to have got to sort of uh, look after your hands for a few days with lots of lotion before you play around with floss because if you've got any uh, you you guys know this if you've got any little you know, little dry pieces of, pieces of skin on your fingers all, all hell breaks loose now although I have to admit I did tie a sec here. I did tie this one, which is using floss this evening before uh, before the before uh, we uh, ca ca called in to chat. I did tie that one with floss, but uh, it was anyway, a pain. So I'll, I'll show you one more time. This is just that weaving pattern. And getting back to that point about keeping the tension uniform is really critical if you can. So there's one cross. Underneath, again, then over the dark part over top, the inner part goes around and underneath, and then back over top, and, and then the <laughs> and then back underneath. You don't have it's you don't have to pull it really hard. You just need to keep it under tension. Okay, just under tension. Did you have any side? Uh, side uh, lead weight or other stuff to make it wider it's just the natural width you're getting from the weaving uh, this is the natural uh, width the uh, the width i'm getting from the um from the um the weaving but uh, you can you can uh, and uh, in some of the flies i've tied i've put um, wire on either side of the shank underneath just to uh make it wider so you can do that if you wish it, there's nothing it, that that and, and that certainly is a reasonable um, addition to, to the to the tying, just to give you a wider body, depending upon what you're trying to imitate. Again, this would be good for not just for stoneflies, but for helgramites and all sorts of stuff. Right now, so okay, I'm just just going to hold that and see if I can hold the yeah. there. There's the weave. Here's the other side. But anyway, it's, yes, I'm just same. holding the ends. If under normal circumstances, I there you can see it from the side. And then mm -hmm. bright and there and dark. Okay. I think that's all I got to show, other than having some more chats about other types of flies. Yes. Yeah, that's that's fantastic, Jack. Thanks that's so fantastic. much. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jack. Really appreciate your time. Uh, You're very welcome. I mean, I've been tying for a long time, and that was the first time I ever saw weaving. So, thanks so much for sharing. It's very useful. You're very welcome. And anytime you want some frustration, just try weaving. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. You know, maybe we could blend it sometime. We can have an episode on bobbing and weaving. But not want one. <laughs> I'll have a scotch before I start. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> double week. Double week. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, Thank gentlemen. You very Thanks, Thanks very much. much. You're very welcome. All, right. All the best. And uh, maybe sometime next year I'll do I can show you how to do the XT on, on well, absolutely. Yes, please. That'd be great. Yeah. Sounds yes, good. Okay. Thank, Thank you so much, gentlemen. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.